What's up guys, welcome to this episode of the My Living Legacy vlog. In this episode, you're gonna see some clips from a live webinar. We did our first one this morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. We got another one 6 p.m. tonight. But we're gonna be running these live webinars for the rest of this week. And it's myself, my business partner, Joseph Caldwell, and my business partner, Tom Shea, 23-year uh, retired Navy SEAL. Um, incredible stories that he has, incredible lessons that he's learned with 23 years in the SEAL teams, and then training and coaching uh, high-level individuals for the last six years. Uh, in this webinar, we're gonna go over, we're gonna talk about all the chaos that's going on and how chaos can run your life. But more importantly, we're gonna talk about how to kill your excuses, master your internal dialogue, and to take all that chaotic complexity of life and boil it down to the simple things that you have to execute on each day. Um, go to thesealmindset.com. It's thesealmindset.com. It'll have all the other available live webinar times over the next seven days. Would love to see you on there live. And we're gonna be rolling out some extremely interesting information about an event later on this month in this webinar, so hope to see you there. Over the next little bit, as Tom goes through this, man, this will change somebody's life. Yeah. Just this. Yeah. Not to mention everything else that we're unleashing. Yep. So. Yeah, and and guys, for me, uh, one of the biggest takeaways, one of the biggest, really changes that I've seen uh, in my life after meeting Tom and and working with him and and him coaching me, uh, one on one, like so many of you that are on here right now. When you buy into this idea of hustle and, you know, just work harder, like when everything's going on, just work harder, just, just do more, you start, to, you start to almost crave complexity and chaos. Like the more complex, the more things I can have going on, let me add this, let me join this board, let me start this thing over here. And you get away from everything that's simple. Right. And I got to the point where I'd wake up every day in, in like a panic. Like I'm rushed, I'm behind, I'm late. And at some point I was sitting there and I'm like, late to what? Like rushed, why? Like why, why, why is my life not right. simple enough to where I wake up on my terms, I do the things that I said I was gonna do in the morning, things that I said I was gonna do that at, at night, and why am I chasing after all these things rather than just focusing 100% on the things that I actually value, right. that I value. And so as we roll into these five pyramids of human performance, we're gonna start with the physical. And I love that we start with the physical because the reality is if you master the other four, but you do not rein in on your physical, your health, your fitness, your well-being, it's all for nothing. All for nothing. Because if you don't have your health, there is nothing else. And what I also love about starting with the physical is that just like you heard with Dennis's story, when he lost 100 pounds, when he got his physical, pyramid in order, everything else started to get better. Right. And I know for me in my life, that's been one of the biggest things is every time I have committed fully to my health and fitness without even changing anything in the other areas, the other areas change. Yep. And they right. become better and they become more focused and I have more energy and enthusiasm to do the things that I need to do. But when it comes to the physical pyramid, what's the main excuse that's stopping people from honoring their word? Yeah, the, as everybody's listened to this, here's the deal. Pain excuses you from being the physical specimen that you were born to be. It pain, and it's it's believable. Mm. This hurts. That hurts. I'm old. Since I'm old, that hurts. Mm -hmm. Can't bend over. Stretching becomes painful. Execute working out becomes painful. Mm -hmm. The next level becomes painful. And what I found is nobody is really teaching people that. that find flow. Find flow means absence of pain. Hmm. Like I can, I want to run in flow state. That means I'm not, I don't have this excuse going, it hurts so bad, I can't be in flow. However, pain is the predominant excuse that shows up in the physical pyramid and it excuses everybody. And interesting thing, and not to, what would be available if pain wasn't there for you? So now we're in the fifth hell week, just to take it back to the conversation. <laughs> the Friday before the Sunday start of hell week, an easy run, and they do this easy run to get you limber. They're not yelling at you. You're going to go do a four-mile run, and it's a really comfortable pace. And you're running in the sand, and you know the wash is right there, and the Coronado beaches are 
pristine. Yeah. And it's a pethy sand that's nice and fine and, and everything is going good and wasn't paying attention. And I rolled my ankle. I didn't roll it. I rolled it and pop snapped. I'm like, mm-hmm. then I'm down. The ambulance comes in behind me. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you? And I'm like, I'm at the top of my form. Now I'm totally recovered. Everything's going well. And he looks, they look at me and they're like, hmm, are you going to quit? Hmm. They don't actually take you to the doctor until you quit. Wow. Like, are you going to quit? No. Because the doctor is going to tell you you're going to quit. Because they know if they take you to medical, medical is going to sign that you cannot continue. And then, then the choice is taken away. So the instructors knew me. They're like, you going to quit? I'm like, no. Don't tell anybody. Hmm. All right, get in. You don't have to complete the run. I get in. They take me into the compound, drop me off. And it's hurting. I can walk, but I was like, ooh, that hurts. And the day is over. I go home. And it's getting bigger and bigger and blacker. I'm like, oh. <laughs> now my toes. Now, now my one. now my toes are sausage, and I'm like, oh, I don't like sausage. <laughs> <laughs> and it's growing up my calf, my calf is cramping, and I'm like, what do I do? I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Oh. And I, one of my med medical buddies is like, hey, you need to get that fluid out of there. What, what, what do you What do you mean? I <laughs> need to get suggest? the fluid out. Ice. <laughs> They're like, no, you need to milk it out. Oh. It hurt already. Now I had to literally get like a pen, had a metal thing, and get the top Sweet. inch of the swelling and go all the way up my calf and get it into the fluid system so that my body could pull it back up. And then go back down and get another inch and milk it all the way up to my knee. Every hour, like on the hour, I'd do that, then sleep, get up and eat, milk it back out. And it stayed unswollen all weekend because I, I didn't get any sleep. I'm like, I'm going into hell week with no sleep. <laughs> oh. With a hurt ankle. And it hurt. I'm like, I'm just going to wrap it and nobody will know. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I was like, uh, th- well, in the process, I'm, there's no way. It hurts so bad. I can't walk. And I couldn't walk. I'm just going to keep not quitting. I'm going to keep not quitting. And I, make it into, I make it into hell week. My, my ankle is non-existent all hell week. Hmm. But on Friday, the excuse was so real, I would have quit. If I had done that, life would have been different. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So what I picked up from that is what happens if you don't quit or don't listen to your excuses? And that my life altered simply because I stopped listening to the internal dialogue that is rarely, if ever, positive. Like positive comes from the outside. It mm-hmm. rarely, for me, it's always negative on the inside. And it's so believable on the inside. Mm, yeah. So I stopped quitting at that moment. Man. And, and so and your ankle was actually broken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so your ankle's broken. Like you just said that like. The top of my uh, fibula, had, or the bottom of it right in the ankle had cracked. Ooh, that's pain. That's painful. And so you went through the entire hell week with a broken ankle. Mm-hmm. And it was no event because I didn't quit. It hurt, but everything, here's the deal, it hurt, but everything else hurt worse. So I was going to say, it's going to hurt. So regardless. I have a level 10, level 4. Okay, I'll, I'll take level 10, I'll deal with all the other pain. And they don't really make you sprint but once in, in that hell week. Yep. And I could run straight, but I couldn't cut. So we have a four-mile time run. <laughs> Dude, I'm just going to line my shoulders and lean forward, <laughs> and I'll get the time. Good gracious. All right, so most of the people that are listening, right, they haven't had to go through Hell Week with a broken ankle. Once. Once, much <laughs> less it be the fifth time after pneumonia and dislocation and knockout. I mean, my gosh. So, so... What's so valuable about what you're teaching is that we all have those pain excuses. We believe those pain excuses and we make those too. Mm-hmm. And, and so what's so valuable is how we overcome that. And hearing your story, like you have to have the, like in my head, he has to have the formula, mm-hmm. right? Because who can do that? Yeah. So that's a... Uh, that. Yeah, like I think about in, in the average person's life. Right. It's not, I've got hell week tomorrow, I just broke my ankle, but it's, all right, this is the week. I'm gonna work out five days this week. 
I'm gonna kill it. So I go into the gym Monday morning, just destroy a workout. Tuesday, oh, a little sore. Wednesday, extremely sore. Can't even wipe. Now you're going, Wednesday. yeah, now you're going, yeah. now you're, now you're, maybe even you're getting changed, you're getting ready to go to the gym on Thursday, but you're like, I am in so much pain. Mm -hmm. I am, and then the believable nature of, I'm gonna do more harm than good by going, I should probably let this rest, because it's a legitimate pain. And then what happens? Three months go by Boom. And, and you don't work out. So right. it's what is available to you if you take quitting off the table. Yep. And if you see pain for that, for just that pain, just it's pain, it's painful. Anything that you do is going to be painful if it's significant. Like, Absolutely. That's, that's what it is. It's a sensory neuron yep. telling your brain something is different down here. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it. Yeah. It's just information pa or data passed to me. What I do with it. What anybody can do with it is tremendous, but don't listen to what it's telling you that it is. And there's a difference between pain and injury. Yeah. We're not saying that if you break your ankle, you should go run an ultra marathon, but maybe you should have a simple process in place to where you're not killing yourself on Monday because you're doing right. things that you know you're supposed to do to be able to sustain long term. That makes perfect sense. One of my favorite pyramids, the next one is the intellectual pyramid. Mm -hmm. And gosh the ability to learn and and how everybody knows and i think everybody wants to become better and better and better to learn new stuff and mm -hmm. and to be on top of their game but what are the excuses man that come up in the this is the one pyramid? this is the one where subtle seductive and believable is available because all four excuses subtly show up at the same time hmm. For instance, Joe, read that book. Immediately you're like, I'm not interested, mm -hmm. which is, this is stupid. Which is, or is it stupid. could be a book about, so like you're in the middle of a divorce or you've been fired, how to be successful. That's so painful. dude, I've just been fired. Don't give me a book about success. Mm -hmm. So the guy, next guy says, I want you to learn about success. Dude, it's too painful, I don't wanna deal with it. Mm -hmm. Or I just got divorced. Let's talk about relationship. Uh uh. Mm -mm. And the brain goes, nope, I'm out. Yeah. So the, all four arrive at the same time, immediately, all the time. Wow. And, but the, oddly, they arrive at the same time. Learning, if you don't get, if my teacher isn't supportive of me, right. I'm not going to learn. Right. Or my coach isn't teaching me the right thing. Heck with them, I'm going to do it my way. When in your life did this show up? When, when in like, your life did that, was that excuse, like all four of them prevalent? So I, I think it take, took me 20 years to be able to acknowledge this. Huh. Uh, Cause I was living in my excuses. I mm -hmm. failed out of West Point after my third year. I'd excused myself because I had been, the world had proven to me and to everybody else that I was dumb so I chose to be a SEAL, because that's what dumb people do. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's what dumb people do. Yeah, and that's why I'm like, well, obviously academics isn't my hoo-ha, so I'm gonna go into an area where I can just be physical. Right. And I'd excuse myself from having learning be available to me. Wow. And until later, when Stacy had asked me to write down to my kids mm -hmm. what I wanted to pass on to them in case I died, she asked me to write a manuscript. I'm like, I've already, ex I'll say it this way, I've already excused myself from that line of work. How dare you ask me of that? You wow. know, so don't, don't ask me to do that because I'm not that. And she said, just write the stuff down. And here in my brain, I'm like, I've already quit on that. How yeah. dare you ask me to bring that back? And it was believable. Obviously, I had an F in English. She goes, write down on a piece of paper everything that you're going through in Afghanistan. The process of writing for me is miserable because I've excused myself from that being available. Wow. And so I'm like, well, you did what that if I overcome that? West Point. When you, yeah, when I had, you I had quit Point, on or listen to, this is stupid, it hurts because it caused a lot of pain in my life. Mm -hmm. Nobody's supporting me. 
and I, f I would always forget to study. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they all showed up because <laughs> you know how you, you know how you learn something. Study. Right. I right. forgot. I had other other requirements. I was doing something else. I forgot to do that. Oh my goodness. Forget to put your name on the top of a page. Whatever. You know, all that stuff shows up to me all the time in that space, and it's my weakest space. Mm -hmm. What would it be like if you didn't listen to excuses? You Somebody, write a best-selling book called book, Unbreakable. <laughs> which is a miserable process because you got to hear yourself mm -hmm. overcome that every time you sit down and write. For, that was just an instance. So what becomes available is brilliance. And people listen to their excuses. Mm -hmm. You know? And we always say, and you guys that are on here, you've heard this a million times. If you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. That they're that there that there is no in between and so you have to be a lifelong learner you have like we know these things like right. we know throughout our day like i should probably be learning something new i should probably learn a better way of doing the things that i already know i should right. probably spend some time thinking strategically about where everything's headed and sure. and have specific time blocked to be able to do that but why doesn't it happen and for me the this is stupid is that i don't have time because I feel like I don't have time, that is something stupid for me to use my time in because I'm doing all this stuff. Oh, yeah. And so guys, we'd love to have some interaction with you guys in the chat. And what I'd like to know is in regards to the intellectual pyramid, so your ability to learn new things and to advance and grow in knowledge, what, what's the excuse right now for not doing that? So take yesterday, for example, or take last week, for example. Why didn't you spend time learning new things, learning how to do things you already know I have to get better. out my pen now and write this down. <laughs> <laughs> but put that in the chat. We want to hear some of those. You've got the four main, but there's iterations of those four main that are, that are extremely wide. Right, like you just used the I don't, I don't have, have time, time yeah, which is an iteration of this is stupid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. So guys, we're going to roll into the, the pyramid that we call wealth. And more than likely, it's one that you're probably interested in. Because ultimately, if you took the time out of your busy day to be on this webinar, then you are trying to become successful. You're trying right. to um, figure out a way to become more efficient, more effective. And when we look at wealth, we define it a little differently. And, and really, it's, it's the, your compensation that you're receiving for the value that you're giving. Another way of looking at that is pursuing something of value in your life being willing to be compensated for that. So what are those things that you value in your life? And by pursuing those things, what value can you create back to you, which would be the compensation of that time spent right, right. going after those things. So when it comes to that, chasing after the thing that you, fi that you find value in, what's, what's the main excuse that pops up? It's the weirdest one, but you would look at it differently. Here's the excuse that prevents people from being truly wealthy is what it sounds like in your head is I don't have support. Hmm. I'm not on a team. It's the wrong company, which I call lack of support. So mm -hmm. the excuse why people aren't successful is no support. And it's an interesting thing. In the teams, that is not no longer an excuse because right. you've already committed to your buddy mm -hmm. and to the team. So there never occurs, and the, and the pursuing what you value in the teams is pursuing the team. You never pursue a mission. Right. The mm -hmm. missions come and go with the weather. The longer you're in, I don't, I was never committed to the mission. Mm -hmm. and it may be misunderstood. It's never, the mission has to be completed. Mm -hmm. It's. What's the team doing, and how do I get? How do I keep the team connected over time? Mm -hmm. Missions come and go with the weather. Some missions right. get turned off in the middle of them. Right. Sometimes you get inserted. You never get there because something happens. So the outcome of the mission is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. It's support the team at all costs because that's just the mindset there. And what I saw in retirement is great leaders don't really care about their product because their product comes and goes. Mm -hmm. So during COVID shuts down, 
if you were committed to the earlier product prior to, to the COVID mm -hmm. shutdown, as a boss, you're going to be disturbed. Right. If you're committed to supporting the team mm -hmm. throughout whatever the heck's in front of them, right. that's what happens. And I was looking for that as well. How do you do it? Because you do it as a DNA. I know it's frustrating to you now that I've got to know you. It's not a DNA thing. It's a difficult thing that you have to it's regurgitate and reiterate and deal with in internally. But externally, your, your team is always being supported. Mm -hmm. And they would never think that they're not getting support. Right. That's rare. Because most organizations, you can go in and start interviewing people is, you know, ask them a simple question. You know, are you being supported in your life by being here? They'd be like, what are you talking about? I'm the receptionist. <laughs> so you could, I'm going to ask the receptionist and know if I can short the company. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And I think the lack of support excuse, I think that that was probably my biggest, probably, probably my biggest one. Hmm. And it, it popped out like in through the different jobs or different career things or, or different things I've done over the years, you know, it would sound like, um, well, this territory, this territory won't support me making this, mm -hmm. right? So you see what I'm saying? It doesn't mm -hmm. even have to be a person or Kim, Kim didn't do this for me. So therefore I, you know, my wife didn't support me in this mm -hmm. or it, it, and I was such a great support excuse maker, like I could probably come up with two or 3,000 of them right mm -hmm. here that just are that support one. I became so intimately aware of that excuse that, that as we built this organization and what you're talking mm -hmm. about, I knew that other people had to be the same way. And, and so if I on the front end make sure that the support is there, they have access to it, um, and, and I'm constantly looking at ways to support them, not just in business, because mm -hmm. people, don't, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, mm -hmm. right? So it's supporting them in their relationships or you know, if somebody needed counseling or if somebody, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like it's, a, it's all different ways of support so that they can remove those as excuses in their life and blow the lid off their own life. Yeah. It gives them the space to do that. Because what the, so. the, what the excuse of no support really is, it's the opportunity to point your fingers at somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Blame. Oh, the reason why I didn't hit my sales goal, oh, that hadn't, didn't have anything to do with me. Right. I wasn't getting the support I needed at home. I wasn't getting the support mm -hmm. I needed from the back office. I wasn't getting the support I needed from you know, my, my supervisor, my superior. But until you take those fingers and point them back at yourself, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's the definition of taking responsibility. And that's why it's one of our values. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And so, yes. guys, in the chat, when it comes to wealth building, when it comes to being compensated for the value that you're providing, where, I would say, are you getting adequate support or not? Are you, where are you not creating support? Yeah, and, and Ooh, that's, that's a great yeah. question. And, that's, and I'm glad you just said that. That's exactly what I was just gonna say because that responsibility falls on you. If you're someone that uses the excuse, well, I didn't have support, well, why didn't you have support? That's, that's your job to create that support. Right. Have you had a conversation with your, spal uh, with your spouse about the ways that make you feel most supported? You think they're just gonna dream that up? No, like because they don't it's know painful. what they don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's painful. It's yeah. painful. Or with the people that you're working with or your boss. Like have have you done something, have you created that dialogue for them to even know how to support you in the way that you want to be supported? Because if you don't, they don't know what they don't know. And so until you take responsibility of of that level of support and whether you want to call that like if you need it, be it. So if I need support, let me go support people and then I'll probably get more support. Or whether it's just simply communicating like, hey, these are the ways I feel supported. I need your help in here and, and I need your help with this and I need your help with accountability in this. And then all of a sudden everything changes. So guys, what, what is that for you? What's, what's that reason why you don't feel like you're, you're getting support right now in your uh, wealth pyramid? So guys, we're gonna transition into uh, relationships. Oh, my favorite one. <laughs> that is absolutely my favorite yeah, one sure. because I don't believe that anything anything great happens on this planet when it didn't first start as a relationship. Mm. Everything great happens through relationships. And, 
and um, being on point in your relationships, and and uh, I think it's I think it's one of the most important things in our lives. And and if you look at your relationships at home, you know do, and this is one thing that I am really trying to get good at now. Like as relationship oriented as I am, knowing and supporting and being as committed or more committed to someone else's goals Mm -hmm. for them to accomplish, like your spouse. You know, the first time I heard him say, what are your spouse's goals? Do you want to know what I thought? (laughs) Legit. I was like, to support mine. I mean, 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 (laughs) how terrible is that? That relationship is headed for Rocky. It's headed for that Rocky water you busted your noggin in. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's terrible. Everybody should have their own places they're going, and and no matter what I think about those goals, I I, I want to be committed to them, mm-hmm. and that'll take the relationship to a whole nother level. Because what happens when you ask the question, and you find out what those goals are? They, they may not be you. what you want them to be. They that's may the not. interesting yeah, part. Yeah, well, that's true. The, that's so. The first I, you know what I? Well, at least you I, get to the. I think you only arrive at true success from trying and utter failure. I would say don't mean to say that, true. you know, it's not an apropos conversation and everybody watching, here's the deal. Here's how you become successful in any place. It's try, fail, try, fail, try, fail, try, fail. 100%. How many times can you get back up? So how do you do that in a relationship? What, what, what gets off the rail in a relationship is simplicity. Mm-hmm. You got emotional attachment. You have kids. You're now. You have to be responsible for the, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. It gets off the rail. Chaos in relationships comes back to avoiding these three conversations or these three simple things. And the fir- and what I found to make the biggest difference in a human's outcome in the other pyramids mm-hmm. was they had to have their key relationship in their life whether it's a marriage or a love affair or a child, whatever that key relationship Mm -hmm. is, they have missed the simple. Mm -hmm. And the excuse that prevents you from dealing with these three simple things I'm about ready to say is the primary excuse called, this is stupid. It makes no sense to do this. Mm -hmm. If you don't do it, you're done. And it's simple to do, but it makes no sense to do it. The first thing to have a great relationship is I have to listen to what the other person's committed to and I don't get a say in it. Mm -hmm. Like what's the worst thing you could think, not for you, but whatever. So what's the worst thing that you could imagine your spouse wanting to do? And I'm just gonna say it because it's a shocker. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want this to happen. If she wants to be a porn star or stripper, I don't get a say in it. Mm. I have to be big enough to commit to what they're committed to. And the only way to figure that out is I gotta be either dumb enough or smart enough to listen. Like I, to be committed to you, to Tyler, to anybody, mm-hmm. I have to listen to what you're committed to. And if I can't agree with you, I cannot be in a relationship. Right. So the, I, I have to go up front, I'm already gonna commit to Stacy wanting to be anything that she wants to be and I have to listen to it. So if she shares, I want to, you know, go shopping today as a commitment. Okay. Okay. Damn, there's so many other things that we could be doing. If I don't listen, I already stuff the relationship in a sock. Yeah. And then I have to be committed to honestly telling you what I'm committed to. Mm-hmm. If it, and it may hurt your feelings. I have to be strong enough to go, I'm gonna listen, then I have to, be, I have to committedly tell you what I'm committed to. Mm-hmm. What I found in executives is those two things were off the rail. Hmm. Most CEOs have no clue that I could write down, so what is your wife's three goals in life? Mm-hmm. What is she interested in learning? What is she committed to doing in her physical life? And what's her wealth goal? Mm-hmm. They'd be like, yes, yeah, she does her own thing and I do mine. Okay, got it. 
Like literally, how's that going? How's that working out for you? Uh, that, yeah, it's good. We're doing well. I make $40 million, and she flies to Cancun when she wants or whatever the case is. And we have a jet, and she enjoys her life. What did she do today? I don't know. Wow, that's interesting. And the third one that doesn't make sense, it doesn't, is you have to have intimacy every day. Like you have to touch, mm -hmm. physically touch. You don't have to go full bore. You have, to, <laughs> you have to physically touch the people who are of value to you. Yep. And mm. those three simple things, when they're on point, the other areas of your life bloom at a rate that you cannot understand. Mm. But if those aren't on point, you have to use the other areas of life to compensate. Right. So what I found to do is get those things on point quick. Right. And I excuse myself from it because, you know, now that, you know, you're married, you're with a company and you're developing the company, it gets very complex, like simple things in a marriage. Like now we have four kids, five kids, six kids. I'm just going to go to work. <laughs> right. That's what people do. Yeah. What, what's, what's kid two doing? They're in school. What are they committed to doing? Oh, I don't have time. Because <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. This is stupid. Why would I, why would I get to know them? Because it's a time drain. Because I'm trying to get all this other stuff done. So I spent an inordinate amount of time working with executives on that, those things by overcut. And it's always the same excuse. It, it doesn't make sense. This is stupid. Yeah. I, I have to go to that. You have to go to the football game. I'll send a surrogate. Hmm. You have to sit down and play Nintendo with little Johnny. I don't think he should play Nintendo because that's what he wants to do. And you're not doing it, it's done. Right. So guys, in the, uh, in the wow. chat, I think the reality is if you were speaking on stage to a thousand people, how many, of you, how many of them would you say could tell you the goals of their partner or spouse or significant other? Probably 18 to 20 percent. 18 to 20 percent. God, I would have guessed less. And so for the people that are on here, um, I'd love for you to put in the chat um, what it would look like if you removed that excuse of this is stupid for those things that need to happen in order for you to be connected in one with your spouse, with your partner, with your with your kids, like what would that what would that look like for you to wake up every day and do exactly what just Tom just said? Just listen to what your partner is committed to that day. Tell them what you're committed to, and then have some intimacy. Be able to touch that person, connect with that person in, a, in an intimate way. What would that look like if you removed that excuse? And you did it every day. every single day. Yeah. So guys, we're going to roll into the last uh, pyramid, which is spiritual. And we saved this for last because really the way we define spiritual is it's not a religious, uh, a religious aspect. It's, it's not a belief base. It's, it's just an understanding that everything is connected. Right. And the way I look at it is the spiritual pyramid is really the glue that keeps all the other f four pyramids operating at a high level unless you understand the distinction between how this is connected to that, how my workout today is connected to my meeting this afternoon, is connected to my date night tonight, which is connected to this. It, it keeps everything flowing and operating at a, at a high level. So if we know that, then what is the excuse that we need to be looking out for in regards to your spiritual life? The, it's a, to me, the ripple effect Mm -hmm. Is you have to spiritual spirituality really means to me, are you going to be big enough and responsible enough to create ripples and see those ripples through in areas that you cannot fathom? Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is you impact everything. Mm -hmm. Like Tyler working out has an impact on Joe. Are you gonna play big at that level? And here's the funny thing, this excuse in this space doesn't make sense to people, but the excuse called I forgot mm -hmm. destroys any spiritual connections. Mm -hmm. Everything that you forget stops the ripple. I forgot to get up and, so people who hit their alarm five times mm -hmm. 
have created four ripples hmm. downrange. Mm -hmm. Well, what would have happened if you'd have gotten up on time? Maybe something that you were willing to be responsible about would have happened differently. Mm -hmm. So they get up late, they're discouraged because every time you hit, I'm not interested button. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I've hit it four times, I go to work having already actuated this I'm not interested button. Wow. So you've created a ripple unknowingly that you show up at work, you show up to your workout, or since I'm not interested, I spill coffee. Mm -hmm. And that coffee spill creates a ripple. Can you play big enough to master that and go, what if I didn't forget? Right. If, what if I didn't forget? What if I honored my word? If I said I was going to do something, can I take that past just do, saying it, doing it, and seeing the impact that it has on somebody else or something else? Like, you know, I, I hate the conversation, change the world. How about make the world not a better place, but the place that it could be? Right. Can I make? Can I train one person that impacts fifty others? Could my working out simple thing mm -hmm. impact my daughter? And then I have to see that through. Right. But I always forget. Like I still forget. I forget to do that. Oh, I forgot to do that. Forgot to brush my teeth. What's the impact of it? Doesn't matter. See how the excuse starts. <laughs> What's the impact of that? You may not see it until you lose a tooth. Right. So the, the ripple f effect, nobody wants to be responsible to. So th r that's the true definition of spirituality. Is can I be responsible to the ripple effect? And but that, you forget. Yeah, that is amazing. And, and really, when you start looking at that ripple effect, and, and for those of you that have seen any of the content that I've been putting out for the last couple of years, I've talked a lot about legacy. And, and really, to me, that's what that is. It's, it's this understanding that this decision I'm making right now to do something, to not do something, this, this activity that I'm partaking in, that there is a ripple effect to other people, to other generations, oh, yeah. and that it's all connected, that the decisions that we're making today are gonna have a massive impact on what tomorrow looks like. And so what would it look like if we started taking inventory of that? Because the reality is, we don't forget things that are super important. Right. And by important, I mean important to us, that we value. If I was going on vacation tomorrow, I probably wouldn't hit snooze four times. I'd jump out of bed, super excited. So why wasn't today like that? When, that we don't treat everything like that. Yeah. And so if you, if you think of the things that I value, the things that I hold important in my life, why would, why would I not look at everything the same way? That if right. I make this decision, it's going to have this effect in this area. We just have to take that more seriously. And, and, and that, so that's where we're at with that. So guys, um, you've heard a little bit from us and telling some stories, but what I'd really love to do is hear about another story from you of, of one of the clients that you've mm. seen this just at scale, like the most exaggerated example, but a real life story. But I mean, this is how his formula, this is yeah. how his training can, can shift what someone would say is absolute fact. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you hear the story, you're going to understand what happened yeah. here. It's, uh, Brock is unbelievable. Uh, so Brock became a client of mine about 14 months ago. Mm -hmm. And it, the story is so believable that I, 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 when I heard it, I'm like, what the heck? So he, very successful man, great athlete, great family man, all the things are... All, all five barrels are hidden. Yep. Deeply spiritual. Mm -hmm. He drops a 45-pound kettlebell on his head during a workout. For the next two years, he couldn't process any of those five areas. Mm -hmm. Relationship starts falling apart. Can't work out because he can't stay balanced. Didn't go to work. So he owns a company, didn't go to work. Mm -hmm. Conversations on the phone. So everything becomes chaotic. And he calls me up on the phone and says, I'm at a place where I need help, which is the hardest thing to ever ask for for anybody who's successful. Can you help me? I'm like, can you do simple things? He goes, well, I don't know what you mean. Let's start. He goes, where is it going to go? 
I don't know, let's start. If it's of no value, then we'll stop. And he's like, nobody thinks I can get off the X again. My wife doesn't think so, I don't think so. I can't even drive, I don't know if I could fly, but where I am is not the person that I want to be. He said he was dead. No, he was dead. He, he, he literally, said, he was breathing, but it was all over. Yeah. And so through the pro, through, through 13 months of really, I called it fun work, I didn't see in him what he was seeing. Like, we're just gonna do simple things. Yeah. So he ended up running a half mar or a ultra marathon. Mm -hmm. He does like the Spart Spartan Ultra Beast. Mm -hmm. But when we started, there was nothing. Wow. And now he starts taking ownership of his health again. Totally didn't believe it. He's like, I can't work out. I have a big gym. I used to have 50 people a day coming over working out. I said, you don't work out at the gym? He goes, no, I've given up on it because I can't, can't lift. I'm afraid that I'm gonna hurt myself again. And then the same conversation with his wife, same conversation with his business. Mm -hmm. How do I, I, I kind of want out, but I don't want out. So that, that break between I, I'm not the person I want to be and I see all these things that I used to have, but it's gone. And we tackled the simple things. And he, I said, if you just execute on simple, it all comes back. And his excuses were what we were talking about. Yep. Because they were believable. Oh yeah. It's not that I can't, I'm gonna show you that I can't. I can't stand up and he would stand up and like he couldn't listen and pay attention. I mean, so I he said, had a traumatic brain injury. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, so it was people legit. people that are listening, there's people that hear this and they go, they go, well that's not an excuse. I mean, that actually happened. Well no, you can take something that actually happened and turn it into an excuse to excuse you from greatness in every area and he had done it.